Everybody, it's Tyler here at IRI, checking team number 4039, Makeshift Robotics, one of my favorite teams in first. Uh, you gotta love not just for the car schemes, but their amazing impact they've been having in the first community and an incredible robot they created as well. District win, district finalist, as well as impact award at Provincials as well. Congratulations on that as well to a complete team is Makeshift Robotics. Take a look at what Makeshift is bringing here at IRI. Love the overall design. They have a lot of versatility that Makeshift brings. Uh, they're bringing a double-sided intake, a cool pivot arm, some custom work that they've done on their drivetrain and we'll be talking about some of their uh, different vision techniques coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in FIRST scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Ben, let's start talking about your uh, drivetrain first. You've done a couple of custom modifications to it. So tell us about what you've done and how it's worked out for your team. Yep, so uh, I guess starting from the bottom and working our way up on our robot, uh, we have a 24 by 24 uh, SDS Mark IV standard uh, swerve drive base, except uh, a modification that we made uh, due to problems with the charging station in early build season. Uh, we've, instead of using uh, one by two, we're using one and a half by one, uh, just to give us that little bit extra uh, of a lift when we um, go up onto the charge station. Uh, it raises the wheels up just a little bit, so it allows us to clear it. And uh, when you're looking from the season, was that something you implemented right away, or did you discover that like during competition? Um, it was something that we uh, integrated into our design really early on. So. Um, originally, we were going to go with the regular 1x2, uh, but in testing, uh, in the first week of build season, we found that we were struggling with getting up onto the charge station, so uh, we, knew some, we knew something needed to be changed. Let's pass over to Jessica and start talking about your uh, intake on your robot. So talk to me uh, a little bit more about uh, what you've done. You know, when we were talking earlier, you said you're going uh, with dual-sided, a lot of versatility there. Uh, walk me through a great overview of it. Yeah, sure. So in order to be able to pick up both cones and cubes, we decided to go with two sides to our uh, robot. So if you go on this side, you see we have our cone guide. So this flips down. It's pneumatic powered. Um, there's an air cylinder here. And what it does is that um, it guides cones into the, this funnel here, as you can see there. And with this, we notice that we can drive up to cones on the ground and it'll automatically center it so that we can pick it up as best as possible. Um, it also doubles as a cube flicker in an autonomous mode that we recently developed. So this will flick out forward and launch a cube into a lower substation. And then that's it for the cone side. If you come on the cube side on this side, um, we have our intake here. This is powered by two Neo motors that bring this part out here, and then one bag motor that runs and spins there. Basically, this sucks cubes into this section so that it can go into the gripper. Um, we found this is very effective because sometimes you can't quite get the gripper centered or the cubes will like fly away from the robot. And so with this, we're, always, we're able to do a touch and own it principle where we will always get a cube into the gripper as efficient as possible. Looking at, uh, from a strategy standpoint, what made you want to go with the double-sided uh, on there, especially with swerve drive as well? Um, so with a swerve drive, it doesn't matter too much what's like front or back in a way because you can go in any direction. So we notice that it doesn't really matter. And being um, field-centric, forward is always away from the like where the drivers are. So it doesn't really matter where the front of the robot is. And the other thing we notice is that cubes and cones have very different shapes, like uh, geometrically, they're pretty different. So we thought that it would make more sense to have two different mechanisms that are more oriented to two different shapes. Well, let's talk about machine learning on your robot and how uh, you're implementing uh, vision uh, on your bot. And I know we got some cool stuff to show off on your dashboard too. Alrighty, so on our robot here next to our arm, we have two Limelight 2s running in April tag mode. They got these fancy little sunglasses on them so we don't get blinded and ever turn them on. Um, current, right now, they're seeing all the April tags around the field and from those, it is able to extrapolate exactly where it is relative to them, which tells our robot where, wherever we want to go to score. So I have, the, have some April tags here. If you watch our position on the field, 
as I move this Able Tag around here, it'll jump around. And then if I grab a different Able Tag, we'll move over there. Um, this allows us to score from wherever we want. So we just drive in, our driver Ben holds a button, and it brings us right to where we want to go. Yeah, going from Apple tags this year, you know, versus uh, using you know different types of vision with the vision tape. Uh, what has your team seen from that uh, so far, and how have you liked it? Uh, we've actually liked it a lot because we can use it for just more than scoring. We use it during our auto to help us position ourselves and get the ex get very consistent results, and we don't get blinded whenever we use them. That's a great point on there. Let's start to wrap up and talk about uh, your pivot arm uh, on there. So I'd uh, love to hear. Let's start with pivot, and then we'll go to the intake area. So Ben, talk to me about uh, how your pivot's working. If we can see a demo of it uh, functioning as well, too, that'd be great. Yep. So uh, our main pivot is controlled by two chains, uh, doubled up just to remove that tiny little bit of backlash. And we have a Rev Absolute Encoder uh, controlling that, which is just held in by uh, a small little gear there, not really powered, um, and it allows us to know where our pivot arm is at all times. We also have uh, this telescoping function, so it's a three-stage telescope. Uh, the first stage is belt-driven, and then uh, the second stage and third stage are uh, uh, being pulled up by string. So if you want to show that going in and out. Oh, yeah, it is just bumper, sorry. Uh, so this allows us to get uh, the full extension to do both mid and high scoring. Uh, so actually if we can show high as well. All right. Um, and we actually have it set up differently for uh, cones and cubes uh, just to maximize scoring efficiency. So you can see uh, indicated by our LEDs um, we have both a yellow and a purple mode. Uh, so actually our scoring for cubes is slightly different in that it drops it faster and is a little less accurate about it, uh, given that the shelves leave a lot of room for error. So if we can show that as well. Let's wrap up and start to talk about the uh, gripper on this robot uh, as well too. So, uh, you know, see just a, a couple uh, uh, compliant type wheels on the end here. I'm going to talk to me about how it works and uh, why you chose to go this route too. Yeah, sure. So this gripper, um, the main reason we made it like this is because we want it to be very light. Um, being at the end of this three-stage uh, telescoping arm, it needed to be something light so that it didn't bend the metal. But as for how it works, it's powered by this pneumatic cylinder. We also mounted the solenoid on the gripper because we found that the time it would take for it to like uh, send the signal was kind of taking up a bit of time. And so this way, it's like instantaneously there. Um, and same with the air pressure. And so we have the solenoid. This activates the gripper. Um, we recently added a new modification to the gripper, which includes the beam brakes. And these beam brakes allow us to automatically close in on a game element. We can demonstrate that here. So without using the press of a button, it'll automatically close on a cone, which greatly um, decrease cycle time. Um, on the end here, you can see these wheels. These are basically just for grip. We tested different the different coefficient, coefficient of friction of different uh, materials to see which would be better to pick up cones and cubes, and we found that this type of wheel was the most efficient one and the best at keeping our grip. Well, Makeship Robotics, thank you so much for talking to us about your team and your robot. And of course, congratulations on your incredible success. And thank you for all the positive impact you've had here on FIRST as well. Uh, you know, we, you know, we love the color scheme of your robot, your shirts that you wear. I know you got a couple different really cool options that you have for that. So see a bunch of cool stuff for that. But thank you so much. And uh, good luck here at IRI as well. Thanks for taking the time. This video on FIRST Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in FIRST scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.